Everybody's talking at me I don't hear words they're saying Only the echoes of my mind People stop and stare at me This is Coon Cassius for I from London. We're at the only Fools and Horses convention here in Peterborough 2013. With me, I've got the legendary, I'm slightly sick, John Chalice. Cold, I'm sorry. <coughs> that's a good start, isn't it? Do you want to start again? No, that's fine. We'll keep it in. We like to keep it raw and unconventional. Yeah, yeah. Raw and unconventional. It sounds like me. How are you, John, first of all? Well, uh, not that great, really. I've had a cold for a couple of days. Uh, I blame the wife. She's had it for about a fortnight. And I just I was just congratulating myself on uh, keeping away from it. And two days ago, suddenly, the familiar tickled at the back of the throat and uh, the muzzy head. And I thought, uh, I thought, this is it. You know, so I've been sort of struggling with it for the last couple of days. You know, I've been chasing around all over the place. Uh, Kings Lynn I've done. Um, also Boston, Lincolnshire. Um, Lincoln itself and Peterborough and uh, so here we are at the convention so I've done a little tour of this part of the world you know it's been quite fun. Um, every year this this event gets packed out 2,000 plus people yeah. and I mean you've seen it every year and it just the love doesn't stop does it for running for the horses and yourself? No no it's it's amazing really I mean you consider it was 31 years ago I think that we uh, we started um, and um, it's been, only fool's been over for a long time. It's my fault, probably, because I did a spin-off, the Green Green Grass, uh, Boise and Marlene did, um, to keep it going. And it, but it's just amazing how it uh, crosses all the generations. And um, you, know, you get young kids coming up saying they love the series and so on, and they introduce it to their friends, and uh, it just keeps going on and on. Everybody says it doesn't date, and uh, everybody loves it. Everybody... Um, feels that it's sort of part of their lives you know it's about their lives and so uh, I think that's the secret of it that writing you know that depth of writing and of course the brilliant acting of course <laughs> is it impossible for you to pick out a, a memorable episode being involved in so many is it hard for you to choose a specific one well I prefer the ones I was in well obviously I'm talking about the ones you was in yes yes um well, no, I, there were so many great moments, but um, but I always loved the one where uh, where Del said to uh, Boyce and Marlene, "I can help you have a baby," <laughs> and Marlene goes, "What? You mean you want to be one of them suffragette fathers or something?" And uh, and you know, and it, and, um, and then the baby turns out to be uh, a for a start, it's a girl and not a boy, and um, and Boyce says, uh, "Amazing, everything you buy off him's got something missing," you know. <laughs> And then, then the baby turns out to be um, slightly coloured. And Boise goes on about Louis Armstrong. Am I going to convince people my granddad was Louis Armstrong? Which is a bit politically incorrect. But of course, Marnie just falls in love with it, you know. And, and it's such a, such a sweet episode, I think. You know, and it, and it just shows up John Sullivan to his, to his best, you know. That he, he can write about quite a tricky subject, you know, like um, inability to conceive and a sort of slightly racial aspect to it as well. But then it can completely diffuse it by making money <laughs> fall in love with it. You know, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So I think it's one of my favourites. I think that's uh, the episode also where um, Buster Merrifield come up with the line, um, what is your name? Yeah, yeah. To the German au pair. <laughs> yeah. That's right, yeah. I can speak German. All right, all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Albert, Albert sorted out. What is your name? <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. Um, so obviously you've got a long, a few hours ahead of you yet. So how's it gone so far with everyone? Everyone being pleasant and being nice to you, John? Yes, the trouble is I'm sitting next to Gwyneth Strong, which is never easy for anybody, let's face it. Um, usually I sit next to Marlene. Um, so they're both about the same. I think women are just like that, you know, difficult, critical, you know, and just truculent and badly behaved. But... Um, I think I might just get away with it, you know. Uh, just another two or three hours. Um, we should get through it, I think. Do you know that the baby you were talking about in that episode? Yeah. yeah. That was you. <laughs> <laughs> it, how funny would it have been if that was me and I was... Yeah, yeah, you'd no, you'd be stumped. It wasn't me, but we could we could have tried <coughs> to make out it was. That, that, would be, that, would be, that would be a coincidence, wouldn't it? Yeah. I was that baby. I was. Um, just finally... Um, 
Del Boy and Marlene yeah. had this chemistry all the way through the years and you sort of bit your lip and never really did anything about it. No, Why was right. that? <coughs> well, I mean, uh, basically, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have believed that Marlene, uh, you know, would have gone with anyone as sort of low class and a man of s such a lack of taste as Del Boy, really. He just never believes it, you know. Just thinks he's a, he's a vulgar little chap, really. So I don't think he ever really believed it, anything was going on. He had his suspicions about uh, Marlene's past, really, I suppose. But then uh, he probably had a past himself, so, you know. But no, he's, he's, I mean, that's that's how it first started, that running joke, you know. Oh, yeah, all the lads remember Marlene, you know. It's a del sure delayed reaction, isn't it, yeah. as well? Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, carry on, moving swiftly on. Yes, yes. No, I'm sure I think because he's, whatever he else he is, he's not stupid, so he must have known all that. Well, that man just came on, came in and went away. Disappeared. Yeah, yeah. That's a, no one's going to understand that when they watch that, but that's, <laughs> we'll understand it. Okay. All right, John, listen, thank you very much for talking to uh, iFilm London. Pleasure to speak to you. Um, I'm very honoured to speak to you as well. Well, dear, I'm immensely flattered that you feel honoured. <laughs> yeah, no, honoured. Genuinely am. Great, thanks so much. Right. Here's uh, the next time, eh? Next year, probably. Yeah, I hope so. Cheers. This is Kevin Cassius with the wonderful John Chalice for iPhone London. Thank you very much. Everybody's talking at me. I don't hear words they're saying. Only the echoes of my mind. People stop and stare.